Henry Burkett got a law degree at Leeds University, graduating in 2004. He then did his legal practice course, the bit that you have to do before joining a firm, graduating from that in 2005. He then became a finance lawyer. However, it didn't make him happy. He has now set up his own business, Adventure Yachting, and is building up to working on it full-time while still working as a lawyer to make money in the meantime. I caught up with Henry and he shared what he's learnt from going to uni and working as a lawyer. When you watch this interview, I want you to keep in mind that this is one person's experience, Henry's, and his experience was negative. Much can be learned from people who have gone before, but keep in mind that this is one journey. I think it, partly a uh, lack, of, lack of imagination on my part. Um, I did English, physics, bizarrely, mm-hmm. and geography. I was good at English and geography, but didn't want to do either of those universities. So it's a case of law falls somewhere, somewhere between the two. Sure. It's a challenge. I, I, don't, I don't know why, but I wanted something that was quite a, a big challenge. And a law degree is you know, it's difficult, it's hard. Mm-hmm. Maybe I want to deep down to have to do something in respect to this. Or maybe that gives me the sort of feeling that I'm able, um, which, which you know, it does. You know, it's a big achievement. Definitely. Um, so that was the motivations for that. I didn't, I didn't have a particular view to becoming a lawyer at the end of it. Um, I didn't think that far ahead. I, I didn't think at all. I just, <laughs> I just got the first thing, you know, just the first thing that um, I could think of that was sort of you know, made sense. No, there was no master plan. There was no thought really about it. That's yeah, right. it's so interesting. I think that um, a lot of people, law, like studying law and becoming a lawyer, is seen as very like there's a lot of status to it. You know, it's it's um, sounds appealing. So I can see like why you would go and do that. Um, and so, what was kind of like your experience at uni like? How hard was the law degree? How long were you there for? What was the workload like? Yeah, so a law degree in England is three years. It's got four years. Um, three years, and um, the course I did it was in Leeds. The, um, the first year doesn't count. You've got to pass it. It doesn't count towards the final grade. Um, so I think I did what a lot of students did, and took, treated the first year as a bit of a joke year and didn't worry too much about grades or anything. Mm-hmm. I think I scraped by with a, with a third, um, and then so that was quite an easy year that is the fundamental building blocks of, of law that you ever use, so maybe it's a year to actually focus a little bit. In hindsight. In hindsight, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, years two and three is a lot harder. Uh, the workload is quite big. Um, and, okay, of course, that's quite obvious, but the reading, the reading is massive, especially when you're reading cases. Um, and some bits are more interesting than others, like you're doing like, pure contract. It's just case after case that are pretty, pretty dull to get through, unless you really engage with that kind of material. So yeah, but that said, the university was good. It's not like you can't have a social life. Um, you probably can't have a social life and get it first, but you, you know, get to one social life. So it's nice, it's good, it's fine. Mm, that's interesting because yeah, I definitely have the like obviously not knowing anything about it. I would think that studying law, you wouldn't be able to have a social life. You would just be reading all day. <laughs> yeah, there were some people who only other lawyers would know because it never came out. Yeah. All did was <laughs> But I sort of thought that sets a precedent for their life. And if, if you're gonna if that's what you're gonna do at university, that's what you're gonna do during the rest of your life, probably. If you're that committed to, to doing something, which fine you might be very successful, but really you won't have any fun or anything else. You might have any friends. You might have any friends, you won't have any fun, you won't do anything. So, yeah. what's, so what's the point? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that, yeah. <laughs> um so you got out of out of law school and you went into the world. What were the realities of getting a job as a lawyer and do you feel that that uni prepared you for the realities of that? I was quite lucky I got a job quite quickly. Um, I interviewed at three different firms and got and then the third time I got my... On the, on the second time lucky I got the job at the firm I started with. Um, so yeah, you get, you get poached during your sort of second year, so you take a job, it's the second, summer of your second year or your third year. And then after that you go to law school. So you want to take a break. If you fancy you take a break, then I'll then go do some sports, go straight through as well. I um, and I moved from Leeds to York. Um, just because it was a little bit less hectic for three years and it was a sort of break for So it's good fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to check that for you. So yeah, it was good. Okay. And so is 
exactly how long is law school itself? Um, if you've done a law degree, it's one year. If you do a non-law degree, you've got to do two years. So you've got to do the, um, the conversion course. So that takes a year. And that's basically, once you've got a qualifying degree, you're doing a, a law degree in a year. It's like a law degree in a year. It's a really hard So my friends were doing that and it was all the time. The LPC, which is the bit of the solicitor, um, is a lot easier. Compared to law degree. And so you go to law school and then you, you come out of law school. What was it like entering the workforce? Um, so what what is it really like working as a lawyer? Is it like how it is portrayed on TV and in the movies? No. <laughs> Not a word. Uh, it, it's not at all. It, for me it was a huge shock to the system. Um, to, to the point where... Um, you do this the LPC, so you do a year where they're trying to teach you how to be a lawyer, they teach you all this stuff, which is essentially pretty irrelevant. Um, you get on your first day and you realise you don't know quite how to work the phone, you're not sure how to get around the computer systems and all that stuff. And they expect you to sit in one place at a chair for about eight, nine, ten hours a day. And I just couldn't get my head around it, and it was just too weird. It's made worse for me because I'd had a year previously, which I spent up sailing pretty much. Okay. So I'd come from living on a boat having no work, no particular routine, um, and then going to, to wearing this, putting on a suit, and trying to be serious, and all this work. Yeah. And my first, um, my first seat, we did, um, how many do you six seats, so over two years, there's six different um, areas of law you work in. Um, my first one was insolvency, so <laughs> working with all these insolvent companies and like making people bankrupt. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really gritty, and it's all like just the nasty, everything's failed, everyone's falling out. No, there's no money left. Um, it was, it's, it's interesting. It's pretty miserable. Pretty miserable uh, subject matter. And so, what was an average day like? Um, you get in. And so I worked in the city. Um, the day starts at nine thirty officially. We're usually there for something nine. Um, you plough through emails for a bit. Because you get a load of emails overnight. As a trainee, you don't tend to get a BlackBerry, which is good as they protect you from working. Like right through the night. Um, so you plough through a load of emails, um, then you'll have some sort of tasks to do. Um, my first couple of seats at the firm, I found everything just really confusing. I didn't know what I wanted me to do. Um, there's always a big time pressure and there's always competing priorities. So to start with, you work for two partners, both of whom decided that what they wanted to do was the most important thing and they wanted it done immediately. And uh, trying to sort of work out what you do first without. Getting, you don't get shouted at, but it's very clear that you've disappointed them and that you haven't fulfilled their expectations. Um, and uh, yeah, it was always quite pressured. And then, you know, you, you grab a bit of lunch and you will leave the office at seven ish at the best. Um, but you know, you will work through your work late quite a lot of the time. It depends on the department. You know, you, you occasionally finish work at two, three, four in the morning and you're back in at nine. And uh, you do that a few days in a row, and you just feel like you're hungry. Yeah. And you come to think lots of dinner plans, and you come to think of friends and stuff. Uh, and then you're a bit, just to be wiped out from the free time you've got. Um, so I'm not painting the rosiest of pictures. No! <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, but that, that's how I, that was my experience. Well, exactly. And this is about your experience, and this is yeah. just one experience, but yeah, it's good to get I'm, an insight from someone who's, who's been through it. Been through it, and um, I almost four years after I qualified um, and it doesn't get any better because it gets worse because responsibility increases um, yeah. and so as much as the long hours you then get the pressure that those, these things rest on your shoulders um, and the, the sort of subject matter increases, increases in importance um, so there's a bit of worry that goes with it and then you get the black green and then you never off the hook <laughs> another reason to go sailing because um, black greens don't work in Gulf Shore <laughs> <laughs> I see you thought this through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so coming out of university yeah. and um, getting a job, how well do you think university prepared you for the workforce? Um, in terms of yeah, being a member of the workforce, really fairly badly. And even doing the, the law, law course, which is designed specifically for a vocational course to set you up for it, mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. I went in and I 
was I wasn't prepared for what it was like. For the fact that you're just so static. I'm quite an active person, I find I find I still find being static very hard. And someone had said to me back in you know, when I was choosing careers, like you're gonna have to sit in one place for ten hours a day. Is that gonna be okay? I'm sitting there. I, didn't, I don't think the university prepared me uh, for the realities of a lawyer job. Obviously, I know enough about law to be a lawyer, but that, that's not what it means to take a job. So, so, yeah, no, not very well. And how about money? Did you come out of uni and you made a lot of money? Like, um, is, is the picture that it is painted about more like, do you come out and you do have a massive sum? Um, no, you don't. Um, a few, a few of the tra if you train in one of the big American firms, American firms are really, really working hard. You can be a trainee earning sixty, seventy thousand pounds. Um, they, that's like one percent of the legal market. There are guys training in one of the regions, which is terrible. Anywhere outside London is the regions in Lord's Wood. Mm -hmm. The guys training on fifteen, eighteen thousand. So, there are places where you're training on not very much money. Training is you're good. And you qualify for 62, 65,000, um, which is obviously really good money, but it's not. I never felt it was enough to compensate me for the impacts the job had on my life. Um, but as that said, it's allowed me to, to buy a property. Um, and it's got me sort of. Actually, I'm quite secure for, for the reason of earning that much money for that period of time. So, but you're not going to be driving a Porsche in two years' time. You're going to be still in debt for three to five years. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about debt. Yeah. So, coming out of uni, how in debt were you, and um, how in debt were, say, a lot of your friends, and how long is it likely that you will um, be paying off your debt for? I, I came out of it reasonably well, I think I came out of it better than a lot of my um, peer group, purely because my family helped me quite a lot through university, um, my grandparents paid my fees, my dad gave me enough money to live off. Um, I did still take the student loan um, and I bought a boat with that. <laughs> 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 We're not the best use of your money in the student loan. I didn't lose anything on it though, um, so I, I sold it for what I bought it for three years later, so maybe it was a good use of my money, I don't know. <laughs> then I bought another boat. Um, but yeah, no, I came out um, when I was at university, it was the lower tuition fees, so I think it was like a, a thousand a year or whatever number a year. Um, I came out about 10,000 in debt. Law, law school was paid for by the law firm, um, so they pay your fees. I think the fees for me for the year at law school was about seven or eight thousand, maybe six, uh, and they gave me a grant. So that year's pretty much paid for. Um, Has that gone up now? Um, I think, I imagine the law school's gone up, but you're paying the increased tuition fees for university, which I think are more like, I don't know, whatever it is, like, is it 10,000 a year? No, not that much. Whatever it is, it's a lot. Um, so I came out about 10,000 in debt, and I, it, it took me, I think I was qualified by about six months or a year, so it took me about three years to pay it off. Um, and all that means is they take money out of your salary every month. And the more you earn, the more they take. So not, it's not like I earn loads of money so I can afford it. It's like I earn loads of money and then I'm going to take a whole load of money. So it's a big, it's a big chunk out of, out of what you're earning. And it does mean that you can't you can have a better flat, for example. That's that big money coming out. But in law, you, you can pay it off quite quickly. Um, and doing, doing four years studying, as I did, you don't rack up massive debts like that. Spend five years before you even get to the training stage. It's obviously got more debt. But yeah, it'll be worse now. Um, the other thing with law now is the job's hard to find. So post um, post recession, post um, credit crunch, whatever you want to call it, um, the jobs, I think the jobs out there have made it hard. And the number of applicants have maybe doubled. It's all the guys who used to go for banks, there's no, no banking jobs now, so they're trying to get jobs in law. As well as all the jobs in law anyway, um, and there are a few jobs. And then you get to qualification time. And all the guys qualifying now, you know, loads of them aren't getting any work. Um, it's a really 
sorry picture. Like I, I qualified with like six months before everything went really, really bad downhill. Um, so I, got, I was even just like a minute to midnight. I was very lucky to, sort of, to qualify when I did. So it's, it's hard now. It's a lot harder than when I went through. I'm not sure I get a job now. I don't think I'd have been. And so with with getting um, kind of poached and the company pays mm. for your tuition or whatever. Yeah. Do most people studying law, do they, most people have that, so a lot of lawyers wouldn't be paying their tuition? Yeah, on the whole, um, it depends It depends on the firm you're going to, so, I don't know, um, everyone working in the city will be, um, I thought, uh, but a lot, yeah, maybe if you go to small practices, they won't, they won't decide to uh, Maybe it's changed now, I don't know. I think, um, they're not desperate for people anymore. They're less desperate, they're less willing to spend money. Um, so I don't know. But yeah, when I went through, it was sort of on the whole, most of the people that had the training contract secured had got a grant to go with it. Um, and so, for, for people who are in high school yeah. and they're thinking about going to study law, what type of person do you think? to work very hard um, and work very hard consistently. Um, it's also probably more personal um, this is than you think because um, a lot of the work that you get is based on personal relationships. So the best lawyers, are necessarily the best technical lawyers, but they're the best at being a good lawyer but also I suppose creating trust from their customers, from their clients um, and being out, being able to go for a drink, being able to go for dinner being something that, that your customers want to spend time with um, and be, you know, be believable. Uh, and then, yeah, just working hard really. Because the way, I don't know how law firms charge their money, um, it's for hours worked. So the more hours you work, the more time you can build a client for, the money you make. So really, the more hours you work, the more money you make. And that is why law firms work their staff so hard. It's purely to get the, the revenue up because you work so many hours, um, and that's always that always bugs me because there's no there's never any incentive to work in a clever, streamlined way um, to um, to make it more efficient. So basically, the really inefficient processes were kept because they didn't mind about spending most of those time doing stuff because it made you charge people for the work you did, and I just find it really frustrating. Go back and talk to your younger self. What advice would you give him? I think, despite everything I've just said, I'm obviously quite down on the law as a career. Uh, it has helped me um, get up to that be reasonably financially stable. Um, when, as I'm now doing, so I'm trying to start a, a business, um, people always want to hear where you've come from, what you've done, your background. If you can say I come from a city legal finance background, you've immediately got that um, credibility in, in some people's minds. Yeah, it's respect. Um, it's respect, it's, um, which is strange, but it, it does work and people believe you. So I, I don't know, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily tell myself not to do the law. Um, I may have decided to get out earlier and be, and be a bit braver earlier and believe my convictions that it wasn't thing to do from an early stage. Maybe do the degree but not do not the kind of work or something. I don't know. Maybe a good degree to be able to do. I wouldn't necessarily have been really good at anything else. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think also, you know, it's it's hard to say I would have done things differently mm. or, or say that like, regret something. Because yeah. I think that if you hadn't have gone through that you might not be at this point where you're, you know, going into something that you you're passionate about and also yeah. um like maybe not, wouldn't have figured out the things that you have figured out now. Yeah. So how did you decide um, to start your adventure sailing business? Uh, basically, I, I went to a life coach. I got to the stage where I was, I didn't know what to do. I was really miserable with my job. I didn't know what to do. 
getting frustrated and uh, it was getting me down. So I'm like, okay, right, I'll go to a life coach. That's their job to sort these things out. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it myself. Yeah. And, um, and so we sort of went through this process, we had various meetings and gave them sort of really random homework, like writing letters to yourself from the future and all these sort of things. Um, and sort of, he, he dragged the information from me that what I really wanted to do was have a much more relaxed lifestyle. I wanted to live by the seaside, I wanted to have a dog, I wanted to work in sailing. Um, then uh, through that process, I ended up with, uh, taking the job away from the to sleep. And we had one last meeting um, myself and Phil uh, before I went away. We just had a chat about what I was doing when I came back. It's it all very well to quit a job and go away sailing with a big I'm not independent, crazy. And then if you come back, you've got nothing to go to, that's the point. You go straight back into your job. Um, so we're talking at that meeting, and we're going to come back. I had this idea about doing this thing I want to eventually got to. I want to do exciting sailing trips around the world. Um, so I want to go on them, I'm testing myself, I want to travel, I want to explore. I want to take people on those trips. And he's like, okay, that sounds good business, so think about that. And um, that's where the idea started. We're sitting in, um, in a pub with the folly having breakfast while we were talking about it. Mm. And um, yeah, I remember it very vividly. So yeah, yeah, we had that chat then. There is this kind of view that you taught that there's this one path that you have to go down. Yeah. And this path will lead you to success and happiness is like way off in the distance. But that's, you need to go to uni need to study something that's going to get you a stable job yeah. and you'll be secure. So what's your advice to just to young people around that and when they're trying to you know, figure out what they want to do in their lives and, and what path they want to go down? Yeah, I think this, um, this whole old model of um, working really hard and saving your whole life to, to almost postpone the enjoyment until you retire. It's just the worst idea ever because you you're sort of most inclined to have the most fun when you're, when you're younger. That's very ageist. Okay. Um, but I think you're, be you're best having fun when you're young. <laughs>